Hey, it's Stephen from Megatech News, and we're at the Vancouver Fan Expo 2013 edition. This year, it's bigger than last year. We've got tons of cosplay, comics, celebrities, and more. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, Michael Kwan here with Megatech News. I'm here with James Armstrong, and he's one of the main organizers here at Fan Expo Vancouver. So, uh, for people who aren't familiar, maybe tell us a little bit about the story behind Fan Expo and how it came to be. Well, Fan Expo Canada started in Toronto many years ago, and last year we uh, brought it to Vancouver for the first time at the Vancouver Convention Center here, and it was a big success. So we we're uh, back for our second year, uh, our sort of annual spring show out on the West Coast, and it's going re really well. We're happy with it. Uh, how, how would you compare the crowd and the, the exhibits this year compared to last year? Oh, there's very much more growth, very much more interest, and now that word's getting out that there's uh, this is a regular thing in Vancouver, I think people are starting to plan it on it. We saw uh, a lot of people coming from further away this time, uh, booking hotel rooms, sort of making a, a whole trip weekend out of it, and so for 2014, we're going to be looking at three days. What would you say is the hardest part of putting together an, an event like this? Probably the most difficult thing is uh, trying to get all the schedules to work, uh, particularly with our guests. Uh, the reason the fans come out is they want to see these celebrities, they want to uh, meet the artists, the creators of all their favorite comic books, and their anime stars. And to make all, these are very busy people, and to make all their schedules work on one weekend is probably the biggest challenge. A lot of people come to events like Fan Expo so they can get up close and personal with big stars like Sean Astin and Michael Rooker, but there's actually a lot of other people that work behind the scenes as stunt actors, artists, art directors, and designers that are just as important to making that experience super special. We had a chance to talk to some of them about their experiences, as well as a lot of them had some great advice to give to people who want to get into the business. I'm here with Michael Benier, best known for his work as the voice of Bob on Reboot, which is one of my very favorite shows growing up, produced right here in Vancouver. Uh, it's kind of the progenitor of all of the computer-generated animated shows. How do you feel that the uh, digital age, having lived through from the days probably of uh, reel-to-reel, maybe, tape yeah, recording, yeah. all the way up now to uh, you can just sit at home and work when you're doing voiceovers, how has that really affected your it's workflow? It's really funny you say that. It's really funny you say that. I started in Vancouver as a teenager where you'd have to go to the studio and be a big deal, and now I literally sit in my apartment in Los Angeles and I do my auditions on the computer and I send them in. I don't even have to drive anywhere anymore. And sometimes they even use that tape, that MP3 that I've sent in. It's really changed. Given that it's now really, really easy for aspiring voice artists yeah. to, to get into it and they have the equipment at home, you know, it only costs a couple hundred dollars to set up your own studio, what do you have for, for recommendations for them and advice for them, anybody who's starting out in that field? I was lucky enough that in Vancouver I started when it was a very um, burgeoning industry. I was one of the first people here in the late 80s to do voiceovers and movies and I was kind of had my foot in the door real early. But to do it now, so many celebrities are doing it, it's very difficult to kind of break in because now they say, well, we want the character to sound like, um, I don't know, Kiefer Sutherland, and they get Kiefer Sutherland. So now it's more difficult to get kind of the bigger name things, but with the anime, with the dubbing and other things, you can kind of get your foot in the door that way. But persistence is the key to everything, really. I'm here with uh, Curtis Weave, he's a local uh, comic book writer. What are the kind of challenges you found when you first started out doing this? Uh, getting recognition. Uh, getting published is a difficult journey. Just keep trying, keep doing it, learning from, from your mistakes and uh, continually getting better. Uh, so I think that was probably the hardest challenge to get into the industry, I think, was probably the hardest, yeah. And you find it really benefits you to come here to Fan Expo to talk to fans and talk to people in the industry about, about your work? Yeah, like, you know, we, I have people coming up to me who know my work already, but I also have, you know, there's lots of traffic here, so people will kind of stop by and they've never heard of my work, and it's a great way to kind of get more exposure to local people, and it's, people seem to be, like, excited if you are from Vancouver, and, you know, they want to support the local people, so it is a great opportunity to come out to these shows, for sure. I heard that Peter Panzerfaust is going to become a TV show or a cartoon. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, so uh, I was just announced this last week, uh, Peter Panzerfaust, which is my series editor right now, uh, it's from Image Comics. They're the guys that do Walking Dead. Everyone knows about that book. Uh, but Peter Pan's Paralysis was announced to be a motion comic first, and then they're going to develop a TV show. Uh, they released the voice cast. They had Elijah Wood, Ron Perlman, and Summer Glau. 
uh, who are doing the voices for the characters. So that's been kind of the big news this week. If you've got a successful comic book that's you know going the route of The Walking Dead, becoming something really popular, what's what's next for you? Do you keep doing comics? Uh, I'll probably just do comics. I mean, I I've, I do other writing as well. I write for video games, and I, I have freelance for quite a while. Uh, but if I could just focus on my my personal projects, my comics, that's ideally what I'd like to do. So I'm here with Peter Kent. Uh, you probably know him best as the body double or the stunt double for Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's done a lot, a lot of work with him. Can you tell us a little bit about working with Arnold in those uh, movies? Uh, well, I did 15 films with him from Terminator 1 all the way through to Eraser. And uh, that, so, you know, 15 years doubling the man and I'm still alive. I'm pretty happy about that. Now that he's done being the governor and he's trying to get back into movies, have you gotten any calls about working with him again? Uh, 15 years, trust me, is, is enough. After 15 years, I don't want to do it anymore. Too old for that shit. So, uh, what are you working on these days? I work as a second unit director, and I also have a stunt school in Vancouver called Peter Kent School of Hard Knocks. You can find it on Facebook, um, or on my website, peterhkent.com. And uh, so I train people to be stuntmen. Do you have any advice for people that want to get into uh, stunt work? Yeah, come and see me, and I'll, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll set you straight. So I'm here with Mikey DR, this from Vancouver. These pieces are all spray paint on panel. So basically what I do is I take uh, stencil work and it's just layer upon layer upon layer. But I wanted to take images that are so iconic to our generation and, and bring it into the world of fine art because I think we need something to relate to. So far I just had my first show back in October called The Nintendo Generation and these are about a third of the pieces that were in the show. So I wanted to reach out to the crowd at Fan Expo to show them what I'm doing and, and just bring a, a fun show for them to check out. I'm here at the Saskatchewan Twins, Vancouver's very own horror film movie stars up and coming here in the world, hot off the heels, their film American Mary comes out in May. Uh, tell us a little bit about this film. Of course, uh, American Mary follows the story of medical student Mary Mason as she grows increasingly broke and disenchanted by medical student school and the surgeons she once admired. So sort of the lure of easy money and notoriety sends Mary to the messy world of body modification and underground surgery that leaves more marks on Mary's psyche than her so-called freakish clientele. So basically it's like pay about paying your phone bill. You know how we it like... It is about paying your phone bill, absolutely. Do your Rogers bill. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's a pretty horrific thing for most of us, actually. It is horrific, and I'm like, can I cut somebody up to pay this thing? And where do you find most of your inspiration for the films that you do? Ah, uh, that was a lot of doctors and people we actually met in our real life, but I, I have a feeling no one's ever going to tell me the weird things about themselves now because it all ended up on the screen in a very naked, revealing way. Have you got anything coming up after this film hits theaters? Uh, yes, we're working on a new movie, uh, an original monster movie called Bob. The tagline is, there's a monster inside all of us and sometimes it gets out. And appropriately being here, we're huge comic book nerds. I can't tell you what it is, but we got the opportunity to do a big screen adaptation of one of our favorite graphic novel artists' work, so I'm so excited about that. You'll also be seeing us partner with First Comics. They're going to be taking our films and bringing them to, to life in graphic novel form. And there's going to be other projects and other announcements coming from us and First Comics, and I can't say what, but you follow us on Twitter. We, we never say anything quietly. You're not alone. If you're a fan of Star Wars, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, any of the sci-fi franchises, movies, video games, chances are there's a lot of people that are just as enthusiastic and just as passionate about it as you are. We caught up with two of the biggest clubs here at Fan Expo. I am here with Todd from the Ghostbusters of British Columbia. How many members do you have? Because it, it really looks like there's, there's a lot of people here in, uh, in the Ghostbusters outfits. Yeah, there are a lot of people here today. We've probably got about 15 members here today. Ah, ah. Not including Slimer. <laughs> uh, but we're growing all the time. How do you think Fan Expo benefits you as a, as a group uh, visibility, really. I mean, we only get a chance to do uh, maybe a half dozen events per year, and Fan Expo is easily the biggest one we do. And it really gets uh, gives us a chance to interact with the fans and show them what we can do. Why do you think Ghostbusters is just so popular compared to uh, so many other uh, franchises out there? Kid, like I was five when I first saw it. Some people were 14, some people are seeing it again as kids. But what I think a lot of people don't realize is there's content coming out all the time. There's new mobile games, there's new uh, Xbox games, the comic book is ongoing now. So you had the original movies, then you had the cartoon series, then you had the series of video games, then you had the comic books, like, and then you have the fans. I'm here with Sean Trainer, the commanding officer of Badlands Garrison for the 501st Legion. Uh, and Anakin, apparently. Uh, can you tell me a, a little bit about the 501st Legion to start? Yeah, the 501st Legion is a worldwide organization. We costume as the bad guys of Star Wars to raise money for charity events. Today we're raising money with Variety Children's Network. 
Uh, so we have a photo booth here set up where you buy a pin for three dollars from Variety and you get your picture with Stormtroopers and Darth Vader. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience here so far with Fan Expo and what it means to get in front of the fans of Star Wars, and especially the bad guys, because they're obviously cooler. I've been running with Calgary Expo for six years now and uh, doing the similar setup there, and it's been very successful. We've ra raised lots of money for charities there. This is only the second year for Fan Expo, but it's growing at an exponential rate. It's going to keep growing if, as long as they keep up what they're doing now. Where can people find more information about getting involved with your organization? If people want to become members of the 501st, they can go to the website 501st.com or also sign up on our local garrison website at badlands.ca. Guys like J.J. Abrams and Michael Bay have somehow gotten into the habit of rebooting and remaking every movie that you could possibly imagine, but there are still some movies that are still getting remade, and uh, we had the chance to talk to some of the fans and actors about what they want to see in the new series. What are your thoughts about the uh, possible sequel or reboot of the of the franchise? It's been rumored for so many years, you know, you've got so many of the actors uh, have been on board and they're not on board anymore. What do you think about that? Um, I'll believe it when I see it. When End credits is when I'll believe it. <laughs> if I'm sitting in the theater and the credits roll, I'll believe it. Until then, we'll see. Uh, a lot of movies are getting reboots and remakes and these things. Uh, which one do you think is most deserving of having another mo movie added to the franchise or as, as a, re a reboot? I think they should just be left alone. The only thing maybe it might be Commando, to redo Commando. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Vern Wells' acting in it. Um, but uh, yeah, that would maybe be the only one. Don't touch T2, man. <laughs> I'll kill you. We have a really weird question for you. How would you guys feel if Michael Bay came along and made a He-Man movie? How, how would that benefit or hurt Eternia? Uh, I'd say it would be better than nothing. As long as Gwildor is not involved, I'm in. I love Star Wars. I'm going to put that out right now. Whatever happens, it's still Star Wars. And you'll be first in line for the midnight screening, of course. Yep. So that's your look at the Vancouver 2013 Fan Expo. Uh, it was a really fun event. I had a lot of fun, and I feel like this right now, so I'm going to take off. I'm Stephen from Megatech News. We'll see you next time.